On today's show, should the LA Clippers trade Norman Powell? What's the case for keeping him on the roster and what can he do this year if he is still on the roster throughout the season? Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Offseason Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You were locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darian Vaziri, born and raised in L.A. and going into my 20th season as a Clipper fan in just over a month or about a month, honestly. I Yeah, yeah a little over a month. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper, LA Sports, NBA, and right now, some amazing soccer, fo- international football content here in England. I will be back in about five days, six days, so until then, you still have to look at this not-so-great audio. By the way, let me know what the uh, how the audio's been sounding. Um, I've been recording it on my phone, but... You know, this weird setup and whatnot. And today's episode, before we get started, is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to get great deals on tickets last minute before an event. All you got to do is visit or download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Locked on Clippers, free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Let me know what you think about this episode. Should we trade Norman Powell? And the reason why I bring that up is is because of his contract. So let's get into that right now. You know, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter and on various social media sites saying, ah, we should probably look to move Norman Powell's contract because he's getting about $18 million a year, which is fairly hefty. It's actually $19 million this year and then $20 million next year. So his contract expires in after the 2025-26 season. Now, here's my take on it. I like Norman Powell. I think he is very good at what he does. He is a very good bucket getter. He comes in and he's very consistent. I think he's one of the more consistent players on our team. That's why I had people in the comment section the last two seasons saying, Norm Powell actually might be better than Paul George, which I think is a ludicrous take, just completely outrageous. But the reason why people were even saying that is because PG is so inconsistent and Norman Powell is fairly consistent. Remember, in 2023, he was leading the league in bench points. And then he got injured, had that shoulder injury, came back right before the playoffs and eventually ended up having a great game against the Phoenix Suns in game three of the playoffs. You can find that vlog on my Dime Dropper channel. He was electric in that game. But the case for moving Norman Powell's contract is... He's taken up about, you know, $19 million with the salary this year and about $40 million within the next two years. Could we use that on someone that's a little bit more useful? Could we use that on a big four to slide Kawhi Leonard down to the three? I think that's the main, that or a third star to replace Paul George or a third star caliber player. I think those are the two cases for replacing Norman Powell because the thing about Norm is he's fairly one-dimensional. You know, he's not a guy that's going to really create his own shot. His only real moves are he'll go hard right and, you know, he'll go lower his uh, left shoulder into you and try to go up with the layup. Or sometimes he'll occasionally go left and stop on a dime for a pull-up. But very rarely is that with somebody guarding him on his hip or one-on-one. So Norm isn't really a guy that creates his own shot. He kind of scores points as a result of other players creating for him. But I will say he's fantastic at making open threes and attacking closeouts. So you could always use guys like that on teams with stars. But the reason for moving Norman Powell would be that he's fairly one-dimensional. He's not a very good defender. I wouldn't say he's below average. I'm sorry. I wouldn't say he puts on below average effort. I think he's average effort with below average defensive ability. He's not great laterally. He often gets lost off the ball. It doesn't seem like something that he loves to do, but I've seen him put in the effort and be okay, be passable at it. But he's a minus defender who's really only there to get buckets. So what happens is when those players aren't hitting shots, he's not creating for anybody else either. He's not a good passer. When he drives to the basket, he always gets caught in the air on his passes. He has a habit of jump passing. And it feels like passing is often a last resort to him. 
which is a result of last resort to him, but it's also it's it's more of a result of him being so aggressive. You know, I love his aggression. He's always looking to you know get a bucket, looking to attack, but he's not a great passer. He doesn't see the floor great. So what happens is when those players aren't hitting shots in like a playoff setting, they become fairly ineffective. You know, they're not contributing in other ways. And one thing about Norm that I've noticed by having him on my team is that he does not box out and try to fight for rebounds. He just kind of ball watches on rebounds. And a lot of times when teams will get offensive rebounds, I notice that Norm is the one that hasn't boxed out or done, done his part on that particular defensive possession. So the case really is, you know, the Clippers are missing a third score. Now, some people might think Norman Powell's that guy. I talked about on yesterday's episode or uh, Monday's episode that if it's Zubats can be that guy, you know, to, has to be that guy to be the third scorer. But we don't have anybody that comes close to the ability of a Paul George. Zach Levine's name has been thrown around. I might have to do an episode on him, honestly. I feel like I'm now, I've kind of talked myself into doing one because right now is like the true dog days of the offseason. We know all the new moves. We're not at preseason yet. We're not at training camp yet. We're almost at training camp and media day. Media day is going to be coming up any week now. So I'm just looking for episode topics. So again, if you want a mailbag, if you want to, you know, shoot me topics, please, by all means, the comment section, you can hit me up on Twitter and comment on my tweets. Give me anything when it comes to episode suggestions. I'll be pleased to talk about whatever you want. But I just thought, you know, right now I'm kind of doing this individual player profiles thing and like what's the biggest conversation surrounding each player. So obviously Kawhi, it's like, what do you expect? James Harden, what to expect in his first full season? Zubats being the focal point. And now I'm on to who I believe is the fourth best player on our team, Norman Powell. The thing about Norm is I'm a big fan of his. He went to UCLA. I've been supporting him since then. And he's got championship pedigree, but it's that, If his shot's not falling, how is he contributing thing? And if we can get something better, given that he is making $19 million, which, by the way, I don't think is too much for him in today's market. I just think we could maybe use that money on a a need that, you know, on a player that we need more or something that we need more of. A big four, you know, a secondary help defender at the rim that can push Kawhi Leonard to the three. A lot of people have been asking for that. And as of now, it just kind of seems like we're going to be playing the four by committee with Kawhi, Derek Jones in that starting lineup. But that third scorer kind of thing, you know, Zach Levine or whoever it might be, we might need that. Just considering that Kawhi Leonard's, you know, a big question mark when it comes to his health. James Harden is, you know... A on the older side, you know, truly on the older side, and um, you know, we could use a more of a scoring punch, point blank. That's the bottom line. We can obviously hope that if it's a Zubats, we'll pick up that slack that Norman Powell will be maybe even better this season. I mean, he's going to get more minutes for sure because Paul George is now gone. So I am, I wouldn't say necessarily, I don't know if looking forward to is the right word, but I'm excited to see what Norm can do with more minutes in terms of scoring. Last season, he played 26 minutes a game and actually that was around the same in 2023. So the addition of James Harden didn't really change his minutes at all. But remember, we still have Russell Westbrook. So we're losing Russell Westbrook and Paul George. I think his minutes will go up. The most minutes he's averaged in a season was 32.4 with the Portland Trailblazers. It was actually the year that he was on Portland and the Clippers. But uh, he only played five games with the Clippers. So really with the Blazers, you know, he averaged those 32 minutes. And the Blazers weren't a good team that year. That was the year where Damian Lillard got hurt. So kind of makes sense that he got so many minutes. But... I'm not asking him for 30 minutes, but I think he'll get more than 26 for sure. But coming up, going to be talking about the case for Norman Powell to stay. Why does Norm get underrated? Why is he underappreciated? Why did I even make this topic? Well, I made it because people have been talking about it. Not a lot, but I see it thrown around about Norman Powell getting traded and whatnot. So I'm going to be kind of addressing those people. What are they missing about Norman Powell? Going to be talking about that coming up. 
I gotta tell you a little something about FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. But we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket. Do you know how good of a deal that is? I mean, every NFL game, no matter where you are, there's not much better than that on a Sunday if you're a football fan. All you got to do... Oh, then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season, Sunday afternoon, out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Opening night bets for the NBA are ready to go on FanDuel. The Boston Celtics are minus 5.5 for opening night. The Lakers are plus 1. I would smash the Minnesota Timberwolves out of that bet. They're minus one. I think they'll win by like five to ten points in that game against the Lakers because for whatever reason, the Lakers come out and lay an egg on opening night in the LeBron era. Uh, they did it against us in 2020 and 2021. They, I believe, lost the Warriors in 2022. So they have a habit of losing the first game of the season, it seems, with LeBron. So, yeah, go to FanDuel. That's where you got to do it. Just visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On NBA podcast. There is no offseason in the NBA, and Locked On NBA provides daily basketball analysis from national and local experts in 30 minutes or less. No one keeps you as informed and entertained as Locked On NBA. Available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so talking about Norman Powell and why he's underrated. Well, last season he played 76 games, so only missed six. Just, let's just start with that. That's great. You know, that's exactly what we want to see. We want availability, especially in a team that has a history of unavailability, even predating Kawhi Leonard. 26 minutes a game, I already mentioned. He shot 10 shots a game, which I think is a solid number. Honestly, given his efficiency, I would like to have him spike that up a bit. And we're going to need it. We're going to need more of, uh, more scoring without Paul. He shot 49% last season, 43.5% from three, and 83% from the line. So if you look at his splits, they're pretty fantastic, especially given that he's a guard and half of his shots are three-pointers. He shoots 43.5% from three. So that's a guy you want shooting the ball more. Now, I don't want him just chucking threes because he needs to get that number up because what happens then is when people say, oh, and I see this a lot in modern basketball discourse and I dislike it very massively, is when people are like really efficient with threes, and we saw this with, uh, with Paul George over his time with the Clippers, they're like, oh, he shoots so well from three, let's make, make him shoot more because the math game, if he shoots more, he'll make more, more points. That's not really how it works because the reason why guys like Norm, I mean, I don't know about Paul, but like, when, well, I'll say this applies to Paul as well sometimes. When Paul's shooting the right threes, and Norm, he really only shoots catch-and-shoot open threes, his percentage is going to be high because they're really good three-point shooters. But if they start jacking and forcing it, they're going to miss, and then the percentage will be lower. you got to just give, take what the defense gives you in basketball. You can't just go out here with this fixed number, in my opinion. i got to take 10 threes tonight. Like, I just don't think that's how basketball works. I don't think that's winning basketball. That's analytic stat ball to me. And I know that a lot of that exists in the game. But I don't think you should go in there with a, you know, the mindset of that. I would like to see Norm get more shots up. That's different because that just means any shot. Of course, it could mean you're like forcing it, but it's just looking to be more aggressive. In today's NBA with the rules and the perimeter rules being as soft as they are, you can, as a face-up player with speed, you can get a good shot fairly easily if you're aggressive. If you have the ability, of course. Like I'm not going to tell, like Terrence Mann, for example, he can look to get his own shot more, but he's not like a bucket extraordinaire. So I feel like if he just tried to get more aggressive which a lot of fans have been calling for. And I think he should be more aggressive in the sense of, you know, don't hesitate on your catch and shoot threes and all that. But in terms of like creating his own shot, I don't think that's really in Terrence's bag. Norm, it's not too much in his bag, but he can look to be a little more aggressive in that regard. I think he can. He averaged 14 points a game last year. He averaged 17 in his first full season as a Clipper. So 17 points off the bench is a luxury. So this is the case for Norman Powell. He's extremely efficient. 
He's a guy that works off the ball, so you don't need to put him on the ball so much, which is a luxury to play with. You always want guys that are not going to need the ball in their hands too much. They're going to work quickly off the catch and play a simple game. You know, basketball is a simple game, and we have too many guys that overcomplicate it. Norman Powell is a simple player. Get him the ball. He'll catch and shoot. He'll attack a closeout. Now, I saw, I know, I listed all the flaws and the concerns in the first segment, but those shooting splits I talked about and a good 15 points off the bench consistently, that doesn't grow on trees. And he's a champion. He's one of the only players on this team that has championship experience. Norm, Kawhi Leonard, and of course, our coach Tyron Lue. Nobody else has that championship pedigree on this roster. You know, we added Norm Powell, Chris Dunn, Derek Jones Jr. Derek Jones Jr. went to the finals this past season, but he doesn't have championship pedigree. Those are the only two guys that have it. Oh, P.J. Tucker, technically, but, you know, he's not going to play much. I mean, how much longer is P.J. Tucker going to be on the roster, man? I, we need to move his contract. That's, that's maybe another episode topic. But moral of the story is that Norman Powell, those are very solid stats. He's, he averages less than one turnover a game because he's not a guy that, you know, is playmaking. So essentially, we have a six-man-of-the-year candidate in his prime. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, he might be one-dimensional, but I really think playing alongside stars, you need guys like Norm. You need guys that are going to... You need guys that are going to work off the ball. They're going to feed off of stars. That's exactly what Norman Powell is there for. So when we looked at last year's lineup data, the best lineup was that Powell Rangers lineup as coined by the Clips and Dip guys. Norm Powell, Kawhi, Harden, Paul, and Zoo. Because you had the spacing, you had the playmaking, and Norm was just there to feed off of those the big three. And he thrives in that role. And, you, you know, a game that comes to mind is that comeback against the Brooklyn Nets. We were playing so badly on that Sunday afternoon. And then we came and, you know, had it, one of the best. That was, that was one of my best vlogs of the season. That was probably my favorite game of the season. Yeah, because the playoff games. Well, game one of the playoffs was the best. But that one was the best regular season game for sure that I went to. Because I didn't go to the Cavs game. That was a huge regret of mine where Paul made that game when he shot. But it is what it is. Now. Coming up next, the potential of Norman Powell this season and the potential of what happens if we do move him. How will we replace him? Going to be talking about that coming up. I got to tell you a little something about game time. Game time is a great place to get Last minute deals on tickets for whatever event you may want to go to. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And with Game Time, you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy so you know exactly where you're sitting. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. All right. So to end the show, Norman Powell. If he were to get moved, how would we replace him? You know, what is the potential of our roster looking like? Well, here's why I think a lot of people would be down to. That just allows Kevin Porter Jr. to slide in to that role. Come in and get buckets. And I honestly think Kevin Porter Jr., if he conducts himself the right way, he has a higher ceiling than Norm. He's got a better handle. He's more shifty. He can create his own shot better as a result of that. 
And he actually has some playmaking chops in pick and roll, which Norman Powell does not have. So, and he's younger. So there's a lot of potential with Kevin Porter Jr. And he's very athletic as well. And of course, if not KPJ, Bones Highland as well can slide in and kind of be that energizer bunny. And Chris Dunn can, you know, play a 3 and D kind of role in that backcourt off the bench. So that's the thing. A lot of people might say, hey, we don't need Norman Powell. Let's go get a bigger four or another star. And then KPJ could just be that six-man bucket getter. Because that six-man bucket getter role is nice to have. It really is. And the Clippers, in the last decade, we've had that guy. We've had one of the best guys in the league every time. We were a six-man breeding ground, as I say. Jay Crossover, two six-man of the year awards. Lou Williams, two six-man of the year awards. Norman Powell has been fourth place the last two years in the six-man of the year voting. But, you know, he's kind of knocking on that door. And Montrezl Harrell, of course, won six-man of the year in 2020. Now, in terms of keeping Norm on the roster, I think the potential is that he can win sixth man of the year. I think that's got to be his goal. If he can stay healthy, and now that there's no Russell Westbrook, because that was the whole thing, right? Is Russ our sixth man? Is Norm our sixth man? Norm got more minutes, but when Russ came off the bench, there was a whole buzz, and like it felt like he was our sixth man because he was a starter and then got demoted. Norman Powell was always the bench player. But there's also the potential of Norm starting this year. And I might have to make an episode on that too. What if Norm starts? You know, there's, I, you know, actually, I've just thought of another episode. It's our starting lineup options. But one of them is Harden, Norm, Kawhi, Derek Jones, and Zoo. Put Terrence back on the bench. That lineup gives us a little bit more offensive firepower. Because right now, a Terrence, Derek Jones, Kawhi, James, Zoo lineup, that's our projected starting five. There's a little bit of an offensive deficiency there. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's a lot of guys who... Three guys that kind of need to be created for, although with Zoo, I've been saying let's feed him, make him a focal point. But Derek Jones Jr. and Terrence, they are guys who have the potential to go cold from three and, and be guys that teams allow to shoot. So having Norm instead of Terrence only leaves you one guy in that lineup that people are going to allow to shoot, and that's Derek Jones. Having three guys that could potentially not threaten from the outside is going to be very tough on Harden and Kawhi to get to the paint and do their thing and have space to operate. So Norman Powell being in that lineup might actually free up space for the other guys. So I wouldn't be surprised if Ty Lue tries Norman Powell in the starting lineup. So I wouldn't even pencil him in as a six man. But my hope is that Terrence just shoots more confidently and better from three and starts out hitting from three this year as opposed to that slump he had in the first half of last season and then we don't even have this problem and then Terrence and Derek Jones are giving us that three and D ability that we could always use more of and then Norm could come off the bench and win six man of the year I mean that's my hope is that if we keep Norm he wins six man of the year and quite frankly I do like rooting for Norman Powell uh, I think he's a really cool guy I've, I've gotten a chance to talk to him a little bit um, at events and stuff and he's always been really friendly with fans and he even asked, answered my question about how his former teammate Jordan Adams was doing. And, you know, it, it's cool to hear the UCLA guys all keep in touch. So Norman Powell, he's also a champion. Like, I don't want to put that past people. He was the eighth man on his team. No. Yeah, yeah, he was the eighth man. It was Ibaka, Van Vliet, and him off the bench. And they won a chip. And although Norman Powell got the least amount of minutes of those eight, if you're in a top eight of a championship rotation, like, you can hold that for the rest of your life. Because there's guys that win a championship and they're on the end of the bench. And they don't get to play because the level's so high. But they still deserve credit for winning a ring and being a part of the team, practicing, all that. But when you're actually on that court getting minutes in a championship rotation, that's the pinnacle right there. We have a guy that's been there, and we want to get there. So there's cases for keeping him and cases for trading him. I don't mind either way. It just depends what we would trade him for. But I love having Norman Powell, and I wanted to win six man of the year, and I support him fully. So let me know what you think. Should we trade Norman Powell? Should we look into trading him because of his salary? Or should we keep him and lean into that Norm is a six man and he works great with Kawhi and Harden, especially yeah, with both, honestly. I mean, he's played with Kawhi in Toronto. He won a championship with him in Toronto. So that's huge. 
And then James Harden and him have linked up greatly since James has arrived. You know, was, you can never have enough great three-point shooters around star players like a James Harden. You know, you can't. And, and Norm is fantastic at that. So let me know what you think. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel for even more content. And Locked On Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We're so close to 6,000 subscribers on YouTube. Remember, you can always listen on audio as well. I know everyone's into the YouTube side these days. But if you have to go to work, if you can't listen on, or watch on the TV... It is available wherever you get your podcast, so make sure you listen on audio as well. And keep subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video, you don't want to miss an episode. And at least, even if you do miss an episode, at least knowing that it's there with the notification bell is nice. And yeah, let's get to 6K before the season. I think we're going to do it. I think you guys are going to do it. We need to show everybody what we're all about. 6K before the season, Clipper Nation. I love you all. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers.